Welcome to your Tracklib tutorial on sampling. I'm your host, Radar Ellis, and we're here at the illustrious Breeding Ground Studios. Without further ado, let's get under the hood and see how we do this. So right here on the screen, you'll see that this is my account, and from the home page, you can see there's a few different things that Tracklib has established for you. We're going to talk about some of the songs that I already have. I have them in this session right here. Let's just break it down piece by piece. Let's sample. So one may ask, well, when I'm trying to sample, what, what am I aiming for? What's my goal? Like, what do I do? There's some people who are brand new to this thing and they don't know what to chop with and what part to use. For me personally, when I sample, I'm looking for a certain kind of feel. I'm looking for a certain kind of sound. A lot of times that ends up being an old record because it's recorded through all this analog gear, you know, vintage uh, outboard effects and uh, the musicians are playing all together in a room, so there's some bleed between, you know, maybe the guitar amp and the drum set, and all of this is contributing to the sonics. I'm talking about a sonic texture that I'm looking for in particular. So let's take a look at one of the samples I use from a group called the ADC Band. This song is called Let the Music Play. <laughs> I was listening to the sample I thought all right I definitely got to mess with that guitar because what's going on in the record it's the guitar line which is really super funky it's got uh, a kick drum going it's got a little percussion with the cowbell sound and a little bit of hi-hat and that's it so in this case I was looking to use the sample because there's so little else going on and I knew when I was making this beat I wanted to add a few more samples you don't always know what you're gonna do but Sometimes the sample will kind of tell you, hey, use me and maybe find some other things. I decided to start with this little guitar. I chopped it up in this program called Serato Sample, which you can see, and I synced it to my tempo, which is 94 beats per minute. I almost, I almost played it note for note just catching just about every single note. And you'll notice on certain notes that I hit, I set a cutoff for the end of the sample. Some notes trigger all the way through, and some just stop after I hit the key. They have an end point. And I decided, all right, I'm not gonna use any of the parts with the cowbell or any of the parts with the kick drum. I'm just gonna use that guitar strum. And so I recorded it, and I decided to make a rhythm. Pretty simple, right? And from the sparseness of the guitar chord, I decided, all right, it needs a little something else to go on with it. So as you can see on my screen, I have some EQ that I've done to it. I've took, taken out some of the low end, some of the low range. I also compressed it a little bit. I made it a mono signal, which means stereo is left and right, so I just took one channel. And this is off, but when I turn it on, you guys are going to hear something happen to the guitar. A little bit of, little bit of echo to fill out the space. So from there I decided, okay, cool, now that I got this little guitar line, let me start building around that. So the next thing I added was my drums. I'll just mute some of these other things first so we can just take this piece by piece. So I added my kick and my snare and my hi-hats. straight eight bar loop. So I've got my drums, I've got my ADC band guitar sample, now I'm ready to build the rest of the band out from there. Next thing I need, a bass line. So I pulled up a bass, and this is a VST, you see contact. So I played this bass line in.
So now I have the core pieces. I said, this is a good base to build from. And part of like why you're sampling is trying to figure out when is it done? You know, art is never really done. It's just a point where you got to stop. I wasn't ready to stop yet, though. So I had to add a couple more things just to make it beyond just the loop. I like to you know, add layers and sections. So I went back into my ADC band. And I just grabbed like one little piece just for the end part of like the seventh measure. This little piece that you can hear right here. Just that little piece, just to add a little something different to the eight bar phrase. And I also added another guitar line from Magic and Threes, Cashing Out. And that created a melody. We're just dealing with uh, the heart of the beat right now. It's important to note that while I'm layering these samples, every sample that I'm picking isn't all in the same key. If you look at my session, I've set the key of the song to C-sharp minor. So that means everything has to fit inside of that world of C-sharp minor. When we look at the sample from the guitar, the melodic part of the guitar, from Magic in Threes, cashing out, I transpose that up one semitone to be able to fit in key with the rest of the tune. If I play this against the guitar from the ADC band, we'll see that it works. That's one of the really cool things about Tracklib. Not only are you finding the songs that you want, but every song has the key in the description, along with genre, beats per minute, and the year it was released. So when I got this Magic in Threes cashing out, I did the same thing that I did with the ADC band. I found different parts of the record that I wanted to chop up. You know, and... And again, similar thing, where some of these samples have duration points, endpoints. Oh, actually, they all do. No, that one doesn't. Just so I could be able to play it freely and not have to hold the note down. I could just lift my hand and let it fly. And so I added that on top of the track, too. And I figured, okay, cool. Now we have a melody, we have you know, a rhythmic pattern going on, we have a bass line, this is great. It needs a little bit more though. It needs a little something to just kind of tie some of the energy together. So I went back into my track lib bag and got another sample from Bobo's Mr. Soul called She's My Woman. And from this record, I just wanted that little vocal from him. And I chopped that up and added that in. So this is the record that I chopped. And I always chop more than I actually use. That's another thing you want to keep in mind, you know. When you're sampling, sometimes when you're sampling, there's no clear path. I didn't really know what the end result was going to be. I didn't know what it was going to sound like by the time I was done. I just knew, hey, this sounds cool, this sounds cool, a couple of these things over there. Okay, let me just chop it all up and then figure out how I can put it together. So, similar thing. Let me turn my echo off. And I thought, when I listened to this record, I said, yo, that vocal right there, that, that's got all the soul and the, the oomph that I need to really bring it out. But I didn't want it to play the entire time that everything else is playing. That's another thing about making your beats as well. You, know, you got to figure out what is primary to your beat. You know, usually it's the melody, the drums, the bass line, the lead vocal. Well, that's primary to the record, but we're talking primary to the beat. Melody, drums, bass. This Bobo Mr. Soul record, I thought, okay, this could be like a nice additive spice 
This could be a nice piece to just kind of embellish a little bit here and there, but not play the entire time. So I just took a little bit of that vocal and added it in. put echo on there to, to accentuate the the sound it's a sparse sample it doesn't happen continuously throughout the beat but when it does happen I felt like it was impactful and it's usually on those fourth and eighth measures so it's a really big turnaround measure to bring you right back to the starting point again placement arranging really important pieces of making your beat as well the last piece that I added for this beat was a horn part because I felt all right it's got this good energy I think what would take it over the top brass is one of those instruments that's very charge leading. Think about wars and different sides leading into battle. Who was leading that, that, that army into the battle? There was someone with a bugle, maybe a snare drum. And there you have it. I got Lonnie Jones, Actions Speak Louder Than Words, and I have two different parts of it. On one track, the top track right here, it's the sample, just a horn hit with the echo on it. And on the bottom, it's different melodic parts of the horn part but without echo, just to kind of add a fill into the downbeat of that horn from the first sample. So I'll just play a little bit of it. Now solo. And all of these things combined are how I made this beat. Um, so let's review a few things. I found samples on Tracklib, downloaded them, inserted them into my program, which today I happen to be using Serato Sample to chop up my samples. I also transposed some of these samples. Some of these aren't in the same key, so I made sure that they were all fitting together harmonically. Then I started programming piece by piece after I chopped all these individual samples. It's almost like cooking and arranged them so that they made sense inside of the track. So everything isn't playing all at once. Some things are playing on certain measures. Some things are playing the entire piece. That's how you sample and why you sample.